We're investigating the limits of the human body in a series that explores our sight, sound, and memory. In this episode, we'll discover what the limits are of human sight, learn about the real-life eagle vision of some humans, discover the colors that are normally outside of our visual spectrum, and how we can trick our brain into seeing these impossible colors. Where do you think you sit on the scale? I'm Stu, this is Debunked, and we're here to sort the truths from the myths and the facts from the misconceptions. What are the most colours we can see? Despite what we may learn from the popular rainbow song, humans are capable of distinguishing between one million colours. At the back of our eyes, our retinas are doing all the hard work when it comes to perceiving the different wavelengths of photons coming our way. And to do the job, we've got 126 million cells that are sensitive to light. These are known as rods and cones. The 120 million rod cells at our disposal help us see grayscale colours leaving the 6 million cone cells to do all the colour work. Most of us have three types of cone cells, making us trichromats, giving us the 1 million colours I mentioned earlier. Some of those watching who are colourblind only have two types of cone cells, and are known as dichromats. This leaves them with the ability to see 10,000 colours. But there's a twist. Because there are humans out there equipped with four cone cells, making them tetrachromats. Having an additional cone gives these superhuman eyes the ability to see 100 million colors. Studies have shown that women are more likely to have this enhanced vision than men, and as many as 12% of women carry the combination of genes for this extra cone. However, carrying the gene sadly doesn't always translate into super-powered vision, and in tests, many such carriers do not show any difference in colour perception. In fact, the difference is so subtle that scientists didn't actually discover a subject with tetrachromacy until 2010. But of course, there are colours beyond our visible spectrum, and we don't just mean ultraviolet. These colours are termed the impossible, or forbidden colours, and are the result of mixing two opposing colours. Most colours stimulate neurons together, allowing our brains to interpret a mix of colours, reddish-blue for example, resulting in purple. The reason we can't see the impossible colours of reddish-green, bluish-orange, or yellowy-purple is because one opposing colour effectively cancels the other out, often making just a variation of muddy brown. When we look at red light, it stimulates the opponent neurons, telling our brain we are looking at something red. However, when green light enters our eyes, these same neurons are inhibited, while others are stimulated, telling our brain we are seeing green. Our brains can't interpret these two lights from the same source. While it's hard to imagine what reddish green or yellowish blue would even look like, experiments dating back to the 1980s have shown that our brains can be tricked into seeing them. Using techniques to ensure that the colours appeared completely motionless to the subject's retinas, they stared at the two opposing colours side by side, and over a period of time, the two colours began to merge. Many subjects who took part in the experiments struggled to even describe the colours they were seeing, because they were so unique. The colour was simultaneously both red and green. Some observers indicated that although they were aware that what they were viewing was a colour, they were unable to name or describe the colour. However, the study of impossible colours is ongoing and heavily debated in some quarters of the scientific community. I guess in this case, seeing is believing. How far can the human eye see? But first, if you've had a great idea for a website and the know-how to build it on WordPress, then Kinster can make the process of actually getting your digital masterpiece online smooth and simple with fast and reliable WordPress hosting. Kinster will be the power behind your site, making sure it runs fast, stays secure, and performs reliably with 24-7 expert support. And that support from real humans, not AI chatbots. Among over 120,000 businesses and institutions, they are trusted by the likes of NASA. 
But why are they all choosing Kinsta? Kinsta can make your website run up to 200% faster. And why is speed so important? Speed impacts conversion rates and SEO rankings, meaning your site will have a better chance of gaining visitors. You can switch your hosting to Kinsta now and get your first month free, plus a 30-day money-back guarantee to make sure you're totally convinced about their service. Visit my link in the description or scan the QR code on screen now to get started. Right, back to how far can the human eye see? In terms of how far can we see with the naked eye, this can vary drastically depending on the scenario. With our feet firmly planted on the Earth's surface, looking dead ahead, with no visual obstructions, and on a beautifully clear day, the human eye can see around 3 miles, or 4.8 kilometers. But this is only limited due to the curvature of the Earth. Take yourself to the observation deck of the Burj Khalifa and again, depending on visibility conditions, that distance would be extended up to 60 miles or 96.5 kilometers. Take yourself to an appropriate dark sky reserve, wait until dark and unaided, you could see all the way to the Andromeda galaxy, around 2.5 million light years away. Now, obviously you can't see the individual stars that make up that galaxy with the naked eye, rather you'd see a blob of light in the night sky. So, how far can we see in a more distinguishable sense? What if you asked an eye expert to score your vision? If you've got great eyesight, then you're said to have a 2020 vision. But what exactly does this mean? This rating is called visual acuity, and it measures the ability of the human eye to see and distinguish details of objects at a distance. That distance is 20 feet. In countries that have adopted the metric system, the distance is 6 meters, and experts use the 6-6 visual acuity scale. If you can see something that is 20 feet away, that should be seen from 20 feet away, you have 2020 vision. Alternatively, if you can only see something from 20 feet away that most people could clearly identify from 100 feet away, then you have 2100 vision and would be considered to have poor eyesight. This scale can slide the other way too because 2020 is not as good as it can get. In rare cases, people have been recorded as having 2010 vision, meaning that an object that should only really be visible from 10 feet away can clearly be identified from 20 feet away. It's estimated that only around 1% of the global population have 2010 vision. If we travel down under, however, and set our sights on the Aboriginal Australians, we'll get a better score still. Professor Hugh Taylor, founder of the University of Melbourne's Indigenous Eye Health Unit, has been studying this particular area for decades, and dubs the extraordinarily sharper vision of the Aboriginal people as super sight. Professor Taylor believes this super sight is due to the neural wiring between their brains and eyes being significantly more refined. In fact, healthy Aboriginal adults have the best vision in the world. Half can see 6 2.4 unaided, and some can see 6 1.4. This upper score of 6 1.4 on the visual acuity scale would be the equivalent of about 24 vision. This is comparable to that of an eagle. Yep, you heard that right. Eagle vision is real, at least for a minute percentage of the human population. While the natural-born abilities of the Australian Aboriginal people are truly exceptional, Guinness World Records lists Veronica Sider as the current world record holder, dated from 1972. They state that she possessed a visual acuity 20 times better than average, which is said to work out to 22 vision or 6 0.6 vision. According to Guinness, the feats of her unbelievable vision were recorded by the University of Stuttgart, stating that she could identify people at a distance of more than a mile, 1.6 kilometers. To get a sense of what this would be like in the real world, take a look at this. The view of the people below the glass floor of the CN Tower in Canada. If you could identify your mum or your BFF from up here, I'd be impressed. But Cider could identify people from nearly five times as far away. A newspaper article at the time also reported how her vision was equally as impressive at close proximity. Cider held a demonstration before a group of university professors. She cut out a piece of paper the exact size of her thumbnail. Then she wrote on it, neatly set out, 20 verses of a poem without a magnifying glass. 
Despite the story of Veronica Cider being printed in multiple subsequent editions of Guinness World Records, as well as being banded around all over the web since 2020, our suspicions began to grow with further research. Ignoring the fact that nearly every social media story about Veronica Cider included a photo of German actress Veronica Ferres, we couldn't find any actual recorded evidence from the University of Stuttgart, who reported her extraordinary ability in the first place. At this point, I stumbled upon the workings of German journalist Mats Schernauer. I've linked his video in the description, although it's in German, so I'll give you the gist of his findings. The University of Stuttgart has no record of Veronica Sider and confirmed she was not ever a student of theirs. Local governing authorities also held no account of the world record. Guinness World Records themselves even confirmed they currently have no evidence to support this particular world record, stating the documents may have been lost over the years. So, what do you think? Was the evidence of the greatest sight to ever be recorded lost to time? Or is this a half-century-old prank that is continuing to this day? Let us know what you think. Thanks for watching, and please make sure to check out Kinsta via my link in the description or the QR code on screen now. Stay safe, and we'll see you next time for the next episode of Limits of the Human Body.